what's happening? My name is Samuel Leeds, and in this video, I want to talk about HMOs and particularly self managing HMOs. If you are managing your HMOs, massive advantage to HMOs, you probably know the advantages more cash flow. Also, if you've got a void period, you're still getting rent from the other tenants, and I think the biggest advantage is more cash flow <laughs> okay um lots of other things as well like uh, article 4 you buy you buy you buy a property you turn it into a hmo um and then article 4 comes in you then got automatic planning permission it pushes the value of the houses up um so hmos is something that i've been doing for 12 years now and i did manage my hmos myself for a very long time and someone just messaged me in fact one of my students saying um they wanted some help they're looking to manage some proper, some HMOs themselves. That's some questions. And I thought, well, geez, rather than me just shooting a video for Ella, Ella Atrill, who's an amazing property investor, who's on our Property Investors Academy, rather than me just shooting a private video for her and sending it to Ella, it might be appropriate for you as well. So I'd just shoot it and I'd stick the whole video on YouTube. So this is for Ella, but also for anybody else who's interested in self-managing HMO property. So Ella says, how did you reference check against prospective tenants so reference checking is really important so for me when i was doing hmos it was professionals i wanted professionals only never mix your tenants don't have some students some professionals some housing benefit tenants you want to know your market and you want to literally just cater to them only so uh, mine was professionals i did reference check them reasonably heavily so i wanted to see um i wanted to see their they were working so I literally wanted a reference off their employer to say, yes, they are with us. And um, also how much they're on. I want to know that, that they can afford the rent. They've got a decent job. Um, if they're on some job, which is like commission only or not, there's anything wrong with commission only. But for my tenants, I just want to see a little bit of security. I want to see the bit that they're, they're in a secure job. They're on a decent salary. And by decent, I mean, um, depends on the rent. If the rent is... 500 pounds a month uh, for, for, for their rent and their salary is a thousand pounds a month I might be thinking ooh, it's a bit low but if they're on two thousand pounds a month obviously they can easily afford 500 pounds a month because it's all inclusive of bills so that's the first thing their employer second thing is I want a reference check uh, a credit check now you can credit check people for very very cheap and it just shows you their, their their credit history. Now, sometimes they might not have the best credit in the world. And that might be something as little as they paid a mobile phone bill late one time. But if they've got any serious problems with their credit, if they've been bankrupt, if they've got, um, you know, judgments and all sorts against them, then that's a bad sign. Um, so that's a check I'll do. Um, I want to see a reasonably good credit. So their job, they're on a decent salary. Their credit is reasonably good. I also want to see a... a um, a previous landlord check and I want to see you know where are they currently living but more importantly than where they're currently living where were they living before that and what does their landlord have to say about them so I'm gonna to say to them look I want to see where you were previously living and I want to see a check I want to see a check a reference from your previous landlord the reason I'll often get a previous landlord is because a current landlord might just want them out because they're a bad tenant but their previous landlord has got no axe to grind. So that's the checks, reasonably strict. Now, if they are young and they're just leaving home or something, and you know, obviously they, they need a job, but if they can't get a previous landlord check, if their credit, if they're like 19 years old and their credit is just a bit, too, you know, it's not really showing all that much, or it's a bit bad, and they go, oh, my credit's bad because I had this silly problem with this mobile phone bill, but you know what, you know, it's a mistake, and I'm a little bit unsure, then I'm gonna ask for a guarantor. And a guarantor is usually a parent or a guardian who's going to say, look, if they don't pay the rent, I'll pay the rent. But then you need to reference check the guarantor. You need to credit check the guarantor to check they're OK. Um, so that's the check. So there's a lot of checks. Doesn't cost much money at all to do these checks. Uh, most of the checks are free. Some of them, like the credit check might cost, I think it was like £25 uh, back in the day when I was doing it. Uh, and you can just Google how to credit check somebody. Uh, you can go on open rent. Open rent, have a, have a thing that does this. So that's the checks. Checks are strict. Be quite strict on the checks because if you have a bad tenant, that's, that's, it can really, really cause problems. And people that don't pay, they're moving, they're not paying. They're often the kind of people also just upset the other tenants. And you can end up with good tenants leaving because of the bad tenant. The bad tenant's not paying. It's just a disaster. So strictly check your tenants in HMOs. Next question. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, uh, I hope you're finding this helpful, Ella. But if you're watching this and you're finding it helpful, and you're not on my academy, do me a big favor and just smash the like button, okay? Free advice, 
Free advice for you around property, but smash the like button. All right, next question is, what tenancy deposit scheme did you use? So I actually didn't take deposits when I was managing my HMOs. And the reason I didn't take deposits was because it's a pain. You've got to register them. You've got to pay to register them. It's about 35 pounds to register a deposit. And it was a selling point I used to use when I used to move people in. So I said, look, it's a HMO. It's all good. It's all up and running. It's got the bills all included and there's no deposit. So that was like a, a selling point. It meant less admin for me, less hassle for me. Um, that was just something I chose to do. If you want to charge deposits, charge deposits. And you can register them at mydeposits.co.uk. But that was just a choice I chose not to do. My attitude was, the reason you charge a deposit is because if a tenant's bad, trashes the place, leaves without paying rent, you take it from the deposit. But if you reference check the tenant well in the first place, it's very unlikely they're going to do that. So... Strictly reference them, don't take deposits, is what I chose to do, okay? Uh, next, did you provide all bedding and soft furnishings within the price of their room or just let them bring their own bedding? Okay, so what I actually used to do was, <laughs> I would provide bedding, this is a little naughty trick right now, it's not naughty if you're up front, I would provide bedding for the viewing and for the photos and for the adverts because if there's no bedding and no soft furnishings, it just looks terrible. The room doesn't look good. So I would provide bedding. However, I'd show them round and they'd be like, oh, this is nice. I'd like it and all that. And then I'd say, yes, it is. And then I'd say to them, oh, by the way, if I sensed they were wanting to go for it, I'd say, oh, by the way, um, the, the, the bedding is actually not included. You can buy the bedding. Uh, and I'd sell it them really cheap, pretty much at cost. And the reason I would sell the bedding is because... Uh, or say, look, you can bring your own bedding or we'll remove it. It's just here really for the photos and stuff. The reason I do that is because um, it's a hassle providing bedding and stuff. I used to find it a little bit of a hassle. And then if it's like, oh, the mattress is lost or the, this is broken or, you know, not the mattress, but the sheets are, you know, gone bad. It's my responsibility to fix it because I provided it. So I always provide it for the viewings, always provide it for the viewings, but don't necessarily provide it for the actual tenant themselves. I hope that makes sense. What length of tenancy did you use as standard? Six months length and then rolling or six months at a time or longer? Much appreciated. Great question. So in terms of length of tenancy, um, yeah, I mean, you can do no length. You can do six months. You can do 12 months. You can do two years. You can make them every time the contract ends. If it's a 12 month contract, you can say, no, you need to sign up for another 12 months. I found that not great. Because if you say to people, now the six months or 12 months has ended, you need to commit to another six or 12 months, often people would uh, not want to commit to that because they don't know what's going to happen. And they're living in a room at the end of the day. No one necessarily lives in a room and they plan on staying there for three, four years. That's usually a short-term plan. Usually the average tenant stays between uh, about six months and 18 months. So I used to... Um, I actually changed, to begin with, I actually used to say no length, no minimum stay. Literally a monthly rolling contract, but I wouldn't move someone in unless I, um, unless they planned on staying for six months. Because that, that's what I used to do. I then did change it to a minimum of six months, but then it was always monthly rolling. Um, but the reason I did that, and the reason I think that works so well with HMO tenants is because a lot of people will say you need to stay for a minimum of six months and then it's six month contract every time or 12 months or whatever. And the problem with that is that it puts people off. Some of my longest tenants that stayed in my HMOs for like six years moved in and only planned on living there for six months. So they wouldn't have wanted to renew for another six months. They, if I'd have said to them, you've got to stay here for a year, they would have said, I don't want it. I don't want to commit to that. I'll find somewhere else. So get them in, move them in, make sure they're not planning on staying for two or three months because it's not worth the hassle. It's not worth just letting, even bothering to let them in and move. It's not worth it. Change the sheet. It's not worth it. So I would say, ask for a minimum of six months. But in reality, you know, just make it really flexible and then look after them, provide them with a good service and hope that they end up staying many years. Many do. So anyway, there's a little nitty gritty golden nuggets around HMO tenants. I hope you found this helpful. Ella, thanks for your questions. I hope you found this video helpful as well. And uh, if you're watching this and you're not Ella again, drop a comment. You got more questions, drop a comment. Subscribe because I'm going to be doing a lot more videos like this. So subscribe and I will see you next time. Thanks for watching.